In today's video, we're talking about some NHL trade rumors concerning teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs, Philadelphia Flyers, and the Florida Panthers. We have some more players on the NHL waiver wire. Plus, we also have news on Elias Pettersson of the Canucks. Looks like he's getting a new agent just in time for his new contract. We'll discuss what that could mean coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today. Let's kick things off with players on NHL waivers. It's been a couple of days where the waiver wire has been somewhat quiet, but we have a couple of players on waivers today that are rather interesting. And to be honest, I would not be completely shocked if we seen a claim or two on these guys. There's some veteran guys without you know substantial contracts that could be a fit Elsewhere, we get the Edmonton Oilers have placed forward Tyler Ennis on waivers. Of course, we know he signed a one-year, $1 million deal with them this past offseason as a free agent after finishing up with them last season. Uh, seemed like a good fit, but he's played six games with next to no production, and I guess he's kind of fallen out of favor. They're really, I think, just looking for flexibility with their uh, taxi squad. It's not so much that they want to get rid of Ennis. I mean, I, I, at this point, if he's claimed, it's not... You know, a, a catastrophe by any means, but obviously they know the risk involved. But it's a situation where I think that, that they're mainly just looking for flexibility. I mean, if he is claimed, or regardless of what happens here, uh, he either gets moved to the taxi squad or leaves town, uh, and they very well could call up Evan Bouchard. Even though he's a defenseman, there is talk that Dave Tippett could go with 11-7 and get Bouchard into the lineup here uh, at the NHL level, which is something that we've been waiting to see this year. So it could be an interesting piece. They also have Jujar Kara on the taxi squad, who they could bring up, uh, who had been on waivers previously. Uh, so, of course, we saw like a guy like Spezza with the Leafs go through this too. Like uh, If Ennis clears, he's able to uh, go to the taxi squad. He doesn't have to go through waivers for 30 days, or he can play 10 games without it happening again. So it's just creating flexibility However, when you get a player like this, of course, it creates intrigue for other teams and it very well, you know, could result in them losing him. So I guess we'll have to stay tuned at noon Eastern time tomorrow. We will know the outcome on Tyler Ennis. And we also saw Greg Pattern of the Colorado Avalanche, who was just recently acquired in that one-for-one -one deal with the Minnesota Wild, where they traded Ian Cole straight up for Pattern, and now he's on waivers. Now, when we discussed that trade, I, I speculated myself that Pattern may not remain with the team too long he's on a one he is on an expiring contract uh, and obviously at the end of this year probably doesn't return he likely goes elsewhere as an unrestricted free agent would be my guess uh, they mainly as well they're trying to create some cap space and they're also trying to create uh, roster space for younger players like Bo Byram to come in and be able to go in more regularly of course we saw Byram uh, get a little bit of NHL action, and he looked really, really good. Uh, so they probably want to get him in more frequently. Uh, and they have a really young blue line there um, in pattern. I think it's just a, a case of wanting some flexibility to get the young guys more ice time. And unfortunately for him to go to the taxi squad, he has to go through waivers. Ideally, I think they'd probably rather not lose him. But at the same time, it's a risk, like I said with Ennis, that certainly comes with the territory. We know there's teams out there looking for some depth defensemen. Uh, he's only making uh, a little over $2 million, so it's not a situation where a lot of teams couldn't afford him. So again, we'll see if he's claimed or not or how that turns out for Colorado. Now, the other news I want to talk about as well before we get into some trade talk is Elias Pettersson of the Vancouver Canucks. Of course, the young Swedish star uh, entering the final year, of course, is of its entry-level deal. He needs a new contract. He'll be a RFA at season's end. Uh, of course, same goes for uh, fellow Canuck young star Quinn Hughes. Pedersen's previous agent was Michael Dutch, and apparently he's switching agents. He's switching to the much larger firm of CAA and going to be repped by Pat Brisson and J.P. Barry. Now, of course, uh, Deutsch, from what I could find of him, I'm not overly familiar with him as a player agent, doesn't have a very big uh, portfolio of NHL players, mostly European guys, a lot of smaller deals. Uh, but, of course, Quinn Hughes is also repped by Brisson and CAA. Uh, Pat Brisson is the biggest player agent out there in the NHL. He's got the largest portfolio of all contracts, if you look around. If you ever want to look up player agents and who's repped by who, a terrific website with a, a great resource to do that is puckpedia.com. Uh, certainly check them out. Follow them on Twitter. They're a great resource for that. Real easy. When you look up a player, it tells you who they're repped by, uh, or you can go by agent and it tells you the list of players that uh, they represent, and they even have them ranked according to the amount of money they're managing based on contracts. So, terrific resource there. So, now Jim Benning and the Vancouver Canucks are going to deal with the same agency 
for both of their young players' next contracts. It's going to be interesting to see here, um, you know, how this works out. I mean, I would assume in a case like Pedersen, we've seen some other players do the same thing recently, uh, where they change agents, getting closer to needing a new contract. Obviously, they want to get a little bit more leverage, um, and this is only, I think, you know, is a good move for him. Uh, Brisson is one of the best in the business. And maybe Vancouver gets them to take shorter-term deals. I don't know, but they certainly don't have a ton of wiggle room. Long-term, they're going to be okay because they do have a lot of money in the next year or two coming off the books with a lot of those not-so-great veteran contracts that they signed that are kind of holding them back right now. Um, so we'll see what kind of deals these two kids uh, get in Vancouver. They could end up taking you know, decent-sized bridge deals and really cash in in a couple of years' time when we hopefully start to see some cap increases and they can project that a little bit easier. Or do they take the long-term deal in the security now? I'm not sure what route they go, but Benning's got his work cut out for him. A pivotal point in the franchise to get these two kids locked up, either whether it be bridge deals or long-term. I mean, no matter what they do, it's a big decision and one of the most important ones they've had in recent years. Actually, a couple other quick notes real quick before we jump into the trade talk. Bruins sniper David Pasternak is really close to returning from injury. He's been practicing not far off. Of course, I did a video back, I think it was probably about a week ago, talking about the Bruins' slow start and lack of secondary scoring and that maybe they needed to consider making a trade. And ever since I've done that, uh, they've kind of taken off. So... I, I don't know. I guess you're welcome, Bruins fans. I'm not. I guess I jokingly on Twitter took credit for getting them ignited here because as soon as I start talking about how much of an issue it was, they really took off. Of course, Bergeron and Marshawn leading the way, but a lot of other guys in the lineup are, are contributing too. To get him back at the right time, uh, you know, I think a lot of us underestimated the Bruins early on, and to get this kind of weapon back with uh, playing the way they've been should only push them that much further along. So that's great news. And on a not-so-great story, uh, unfortunately, uh, Predators goaltender Connor Ingram, who was on their uh, taxi squad, who's basically a minor league goaltender, looking for more of an opportunity, unfortunately is stepping away from the team and it's going into the NHL Player Assistance Program, which is put together by the league and the NHL Players Association. Of course, it's all private. We don't know the reasons. We likely never will unless he decides to speak openly about it once he's done. Of course, we saw that with Bobby Ryan, prime example of somebody who went through it and did speak about it where he battled alcoholism uh, and came out a much better person and has uh, certainly rebounded nicely. Uh, of course, like I said, we don't know what's going on with Ingram. We just want to wish him the best. Hopefully everything turns out. He gets whatever help he needs. Something about Ingram's past that I found a little bit odd about a year or two ago uh, when he was with the Lightning organization, uh, they basically up and gave him away to the Predators, like just kind of out of the blue. I mean, I know they have Vasilevsky. It's not like he was going to likely blossom into taking away Vasilevsky's job or anything, but you know, he, he's a good goaltender. I think he's a, one of the higher-ranked prospect goalies, in, in my opinion, at least. And I think he's got a real future of him, especially if he can get everything in order or whatever, whatever he's dealing with here. And I wondered if there might have been something going on with him on a personal basis that was impacting things. Um, and maybe he didn't want to get the help. I don't know. I'm just kind of speculating. It just seemed like a really odd departure from Tampa, and, and I wonder if there might have been something impacting things then, and, and maybe he's getting the help for it now. Regardless of what it is, I, I wish the young man nothing but the best, and hopefully he can return to the NHL, join the Predators, and get his career on track. Now, of course, as I mentioned, we have some trade talk today looking at the Leafs, Flyers, and Panthers. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, of course, as we know, are looking at some depth forwards. We talked about this yesterday that they are looking to kind of bolster that depth a little bit because of the injury bug that they faced recently with guys like Joe Thornton and Nick Robertson ended up on long-term injury reserve. They've been hit hard in that regard and maybe they haven't been the most pleased with the other depth players they have like Pierre Engvall. You've got Adam Brooks. You know, you've got Jason Spezza down there and you know, it sounded like they wanted to make an upgrade so they might be looking to swap one of those guys out and maybe for somebody who can be a little bit more offensive, a little bit more skilled perhaps. Uh, and now there's talk through The Athletic and Jonas Seigel that maybe they would be willing to move Travis Dermott to make that happen. Of course, this is more speculation on uh, on Jonas's part, but still, it, it makes sense as Dermott is a piece that they feel are is expendable, and it totally makes sense. If you look at their top four, I mean, you've got uh, obviously Morgan Riley and TJ Brody. You've got Jake Muzzin and Justin Hall, and really, I'm... Hall's actually emerged into a pretty decent top four guy. He's really developed. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, he couldn't get in the lineup under Mike Babcock, and now look at him. So it's certainly he's come a long way. And, of course, they have Dermot and Bogosian. He's still got Miko Lettinen, Rasmus Sandin, Timothy Lilgren waiting in the wings. Uh, you know, even Callie Rosen, Martin Marinson. I know they're not, you know, high-end uh, caliber 
prospects anymore, but still, like, still, they're, they're there as depth pieces if needed. They have plenty of D and players who can play. Uh, and uh, Jonas Bones goes on to talk about the fact that maybe Dermot could be a player that's uh, sent out to get an extra forward back who could help them. And, of course, uh, you know, wondering like a team like Pittsburgh, who's looking for a defenseman out there, if they could possibly be a possible match. I mean, a Toronto-Pittsburgh trade wouldn't be completely out of the ordinary. They've done it before. Uh, clearly, you know, they're a team that can use Dermot. Maybe they would move out a guy like an Evan Rodriguez, for example. Rodriguez, of course, was briefly with Toronto, never got into game action. Um, but obviously somebody the Leafs were considering, um, you know, keeping them on board, but, held, you know, decided against it, obviously because of all the other options they had. Uh, maybe uh, they could look at a guy like a Teddy Bluger, which was my reference in the article. But you know what? I don't really think Bluger's going anywhere. I think if the Penguins are going to make a trade, Rodriguez is probably one of the few guys that they could do it with. Or they'd be looking to give up maybe some kind of a prospect or a pick in return. Um, so difficult to say. It could be different moves. But interesting to see that Dermot could be the expendable piece to bring back another depth forward. That both of those teams have different options. Instead of talking to each other about a trade, there's each a player on waivers that could certainly interest them today as well. You've got Tyler Ennis, who's very familiar with the Leafs after playing with them before and being a fairly popular teammate and decent contributor for the year he was there. Now he's on waivers at one year, one million. He's the kind of player that they'd probably be looking to bring in. Could they make a waiver claim? Instead, they might end up having to put somebody of their own through waivers and make some other roster adjustments because they're so tight on space. Or they move Dermot in a separate deal or something to that effect. But there is an option there. Uh, and, of course, you have Greg Pattern on waivers, like I mentioned. Uh, and, of course, Pittsburgh is looking for a veteran depth defenseman. So that's exactly what he is. So the money may not be you know, the most... Easy to work around. That's always the challenge. But instead of making deals, they do have that option as well. Now, as I mentioned, we want to look at the Flyers and the Panthers. Now, there's talk that these two teams could hook up on a deal and possibly swap defensemen that are kind of, you know, somewhat on the outs. Now, of course, you got Keith Yandel with everything we talked about with him. If you're not familiar with the situation, just to briefly summarize, heading into training camp, Yandel was essentially blamed for a lot of the Panthers' Past failures, uh, the fact that he wasn't strong enough defensively, and uh, kind of called out apparently by some of his teammates during exit interviews after the season. Coming into the year, new GM Bill Zito kind of wanted to make a statement, and they were holding him out of the main group. It looks like they were going to scratch him to start the year, which was going to put his Ironman streak at risk to being over with because of that, which was obviously a bit of a controversy. Ended up not happening. He's been playing well, but there's still a lot of talk that really like to move that salary of his out. He does have a no move, so he has to work with them. But there was speculation that a few teams he would be willing to look at would be like the Philly, would be the Flyers, Islanders, and Bruins were the teams that came up in the past. Uh, of course, we don't know. I have to see what truth there is to that if this comes to be. But the Flyers apparently were willing to consider swapping Yandel for Shane Gossespierre. Now, in that case, the Panthers would only have to retain a little bit of money to even things out. And the Panthers, I think, to me, would get a pretty good deal. If they can get Gossespierre to play like he had before, they get a very much younger version of, uh, of Yandel. I mean, really, he's a similar type of guy. He's not the greatest defensively, but he can put up the offensive points when he's playing at his best. And in uh, Philly's case, they get to move an asset uh, that obviously you know, hasn't worked out for them. They have a pretty deep blue line without him right now. And adding a veteran like Yandel to them, it might be a better fit, even though he's an older player. With the, you know, I, I don't know. Money-wise, they could even it out, right? So it, it kind of makes sense. The only real kind of issue that makes it not necessarily even is the age. Um, and it just really boils down to how things go. I mean, uh, Gosses Bear's got a pretty affordable contract for a guy who can put up 50 plus points if he can play that way. But he's also gone through some injuries. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was unfortunately one of the players who had COVID earlier. So that impacted his return. Um, so, you know, over time, it is a deal. Apparently they, they have discussed. Uh, apparently, even before the season started, Apparently, there were conversations between these two teams about possibly swapping these two defensemen. And it is something that very well could be picked up again as they you know, try to find new homes for each of these players. Now, it may not come to be. It might be a case, too, for Florida. Uh, it was the way Yandel's been playing and contributing offensively and helping that power play. They, they may hold off here and kind of reevaluate this a little bit later on. And if he can kind of turn the tides here and show that he is a good teammate and he is willing to put more effort defensively, you know, he's got a lot of term left in that deal, a fair bit of money in the next few years, but, you know, maybe they have uh, remorse in that and they don't do it. But if they want to do it, they have a partner in Philly who's willing to listen and send them a younger defenseman who might be able to give them the same thing. So 
We will see how things go. Let me know what your thoughts on that potential trade would be down in the comments. Does it make sense? Would you do it if you're the Flyers? Would you do it if you're the Panthers? And we'll discuss further in the comments. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Thank you.